by music and dancing. So I'm delighted to say that Tony Larkin and Jeff Davis have joined <laughs> us on the stage now. I'm even more delighted to say they won't be dancing. Tony is going to conduct the draw. Jeff will be the IBSA verifier. But before all of that, let's have a few words from our top man, Dave Clark. Is here. Come on, Dave. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real privilege to be back in this hall, which uh, comes with memories of pain, most of it inflicted by Asa over there, who's uh, probably grinning to himself now and remembering how much he put me through, uh, but also some joy and, uh, and the occasional goal, particularly the one against Germany. Um, it is a real pleasure to be back in Hereford talking about blind football and talking about an upcoming championships. Uh, in Hereford again. We all had a magnificent time back in 2010 at the World Cup where uh, England were able to achieve the highest ever position as fourth uh, and those memories will live forever with me and with the rest of the team who were involved and it's so fantastic that you're inviting the football community back to enjoy the hospitality and the fabulous facilities that we've already spoken about here in, in Hereford. I think it's worth reflecting just for a moment though that when I was born all those years ago in 1970, there was no such opportunity for blind athletes and for blind footballers in particular. There were no pathways to play for school, club, county, and certainly not for country. And everyone has worked so tremendously hard since 1995, when Tony Larkin picked up the baton and started to run the Great Britain squad, through to the FA coming on board, and the tremendous work of people like Jeff Davis and his colleagues at the FA, uh, plus the college here and all the people that are involved who are here today, the likes of Dixie and of course the quite incredible John Pugh who, uh, as has already been mentioned, is unbeaten as the current, uh, current coach and I hope I'm not putting too much pressure on you there, Pugh, to continue that, that uh, level of performance. But those opportunities didn't exist and they do now, which is what's so very, very important. And of course now the challenge is we're running the championships uh, and it is really important that we all work tremendously hard to really bring to bear the commercial argument of why it is so important that sport, as Sir Philip Craven said, is given the commercial support that it requires. And I will use the phrase because it is currently how it's thought of, disability sport needs to make that commercial argument as equally as strongly as the current predominantly male-dominated professional sports making this country today. There is an equal argument and a very compelling argument for sponsors to come on board and broadcasters to come on board. And we have evidence in the room today with the likes of Boomerang here and local sponsors that, that sport and the sort of sport we're going to see here next August is commercially viable and very, very powerful indeed. The opportunity to play for your country is the most incredible feeling you can ever have. Success playing for your country tops it. And in August next year, we are all going to come together to once and for all prove that Great Britain has a role to play in world blind football and can continue on the pathway through the European Championships and down the road to Rio in 2016. It's really vital that not just Hereford, but the country gets behind the championships and the fortunes of our team. And there's a whole host of fantastic ways in which we can do that. I understand the website goes live today. There's Twitter, there's Facebook. There are all sorts of ways. But as we've recently seen with the women's football game and the upcoming game at Wembley, where 55,000 tickets have been sold, we can all play a part in that. So I would call on everybody to, to give the European Championships your total support. Let's drive it forward. Let's give our own team a fantastic chance of winning. But let's also make sure that we put on the most incredible European Championships, as I know Hereford and RNC will, to make the rest of the world 
look at what we're doing here through the Sports Academy, through our facilities and our attitude to sport. And let's put on a real show. Thank you. There's a one here. Oh, fantastic. Hi, I'm going to hand over to Tony. He's going to MC the draw itself. Tony? Tony up. Okay, just before we start the draw, um, I'm going to let you know how important this draw is. Um, because in August 2015, uh, the first two uh, countries that come first and second actually qualify for Rio 2016. And I want to take this opportunity, and I'm sure, and I don't want to put pressure on John, but I know John, Jeff, the staff, and the players, you know, we're going to win those European Championships, because we're fed up in the second. <laughs> I'm just going to ask both uh, Sir Philip and Jeff Davis. Jeff Davis is the FA's league manager, but he's here on behalf of IPSA, which is the International Blind Sports Association, to actually help them verify with the draw. So we're going to ask you both to come forward. Um, the way we're going to do the draw, in Group A, will be the host country, England. They've actually been to nine championships and we've been runners-up on six occasions. And in Group B will be Spain, who are the current European champions. They've been to nine championships and they're all favourites because they've actually won it seven times. So first of all, we're going to start in the first pot where we're going to have France and Turkey. I'm going to ask Sir Philip to open up one of the balls. Um, and pass the leaflet to Jeff Davis. So this first one out is going to be in Group A. Okay, here we go. And in Group A is Turkey. Did you check them out? So this next ball is in, going into Group B. And that is France. We're now going to do the next seeds, which will actually be. Um, we'll think about that wrong. No, it's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's from pot two, and these are going to be the next seeds. So again, I'll ask Sir Philip. Mm. And this is for pot A. And it's Germany. <laughs> and for pot B. Russia. And now we're going to put it on this side. And we're going to pot 3. Again, I'll ask Sir Philip to take the ball. And in Group A will be Italy. In Group B is Greece. Okay, in the final pot now. It's two new countries, because again, um, blind football has been developing throughout Europe, so it's gone from M8, to country event, to a 10. So this is going to be both Poland and Belgium. So again, the first ball goes into Group A. And that is Poland. And the final ball is going into Group B. There's again another newcomers. I can see that now upside down, Belgium. Well done. Interesting group. John, come and join us on stage. Let's have a little chat about the uh, prospects of England. 
I think if this was uh, now you come, you come up. I think if this was uh, a conventional draw, we'd be looking at this saying, oh, England, Germany, England, Italy. Danny reminded me of the famous Greg Dyke group of deaths. <laughs> what do you think of this one? Well, what's really interesting is it's actually exactly the same group that England played in, in the last European Championships, apart from Poland, they're a new team. So we've got a few scores to settle there. Um, also, other teams that have been arguing we've beaten really recently, so we're kind of quite happy with it. So there's nobody there you wanted to avoid? No, I think it's just important that we set our store that straight away and beat anyone to put it in front of us. England and Germany is a sort of traditional rivalry at, at, uh, at senior level. Is it the same with the Bryan football team? What, what is the German Bryan football team like? Uh, they're an Olympic nation, they're very good. Um, we drew them and, and beat them uh, a few months ago. Um, and they've got some really good players coming through. Um, but still, I think we, we should be a little bit too much for them, hopefully. Sure, and who else did we rate in this group? England, Turkey, Germany, Italy, Poland. Italy, are they a traditional force as well? Um, no, they were bodies behind the ball type team, so it took a bit of break. It's very Italian. Yeah, but Danny likes that kind of football. <laughs> Everybody behind the ball. But again, I think we've got enough to break them down, um, so we should be comfortable then. Uh, Poland, never seen Poland play, so that'd be an interesting uh, game for us. So, how much research can you do for this prior to the event? Well, um, next week, this afternoon, Jeff, we're going out to Japan to. Uh, Skype the World Cup. Um, two of the teams in our group are playing there, so we'll have a good chance to see them. But obviously, getting through the groups just 